Welcome to the C Programming Language in Action. This course will provide you with a complete and practical tour of the C Programming Language and libraries, even including bits of C++. I don't assume you have any prior experience writing code, but I do assume that you have a desire to learn what is undoubtedly the most powerful systems programming language available on more platforms for more processors and microcontrollers than any other. And thanks to C++, your C code always has the opportunity to go beyond what C alone offers, if and when you need a little more abstraction without sacrificing performance or code compatibility. So in this course, I'm going to cover the fundamentals of the C programming language. I'll mostly cover what's commonly referred to as NCC or C89. Despite newer standards, such as C99 and C11, C89 remains the version of C most widely supported and most commonly used, almost exclusively in fact. Still, where I do talk about something new to C99 and C11, I'll try to point it out. It can often be a bit confusing what exactly constitutes C since many, if not all, compilers support both C and C++, and often the C compiler supports various C++-isms. Remember, this course is about practical C programming, and not so much about pure C from an academic or legal sense. I'm also going to cover the standard library that is included with most, if not all, C compilers. Ultimately, I'm going to show you how to go beyond C to exploit the power of C++. The C programming language has a strong, if not dominant, position as the system's programming language for embedded programming, kernel and driver development, where close to the hardware is a way of life. Reliability and correctness is not only important, but can often be a matter of life and death, where resources are limited. Real-time responsiveness can often be essential, and code needs to run for many years without reboots or any sort of human involvement. In these environments, precise control is not negotiable, and yet there is a small subset of C++ over and above the C subset that is predictable and safe for use in such restricted environments where predictability is king. So we'll look at that in due time. Concurrency is a way of life in embedded systems uh, far more obviously, say, than in mainstream computing. Embedded systems are all about responding to real-world events with sensors, analog to digital conversion, and a myriad of communications buses. But first, I want to introduce you to some of the programming environments that are widely available and offer good support for writing programs in C. I'll show you how to get started with Visual Studio and the Visual C++ compiler. GCC plays a big role in embedded programming as it's been adopted by so many toolchains. Although GCC has had a bad reputation for code generation, Atmel and ARM have invested the time of their own engineers to pour into the GCC compiler backend. So although it's not always the best choice, it's usually the most economical choice, as ARM's compiler is very expensive. Once I've introduced some programming environments and platforms, you can pick the one that's best for you and follow along for the rest of this course, where I'll be focusing mostly on the C programming language and libraries, which should be much the same regardless of what compiler or platform you're using. So let's get started.